In lesson 6.9, students add a base to acidic solutions and then add an acid to basic solutions until they become neutral. So the question they investigate is how many drops of an acid or a base does it take to neutralize different basic or acidic solutions? Actually, what they're doing is first they use a base to neutralize an acidic solution and then they make an acidic solution more concentrated and see if it takes more or less base or the same amount to neutralize it. And they see that it takes more base to neutralize a more acidic solution. And then they reverse that and they see that it takes more acid to neutralize a more concentrated basic solution. So the science concepts are that if a base is added to an acidic solution, the solution becomes less acidic and moves toward the middle of the pH scale, in other words, it's neutralized, and more base is needed to neutralize a more concentrated acidic solution. And then the reverse is true. If an acid is added to a basic solution, the solution becomes less basic and moves toward the middle of the pH scale, and more acid is needed to neutralize a more concentrated basic solution. So the first thing that students do is they put some water in a well plate, and they add universal indicator to both wells, and the universal indicator is originally green, but then they put a citric acid solution in that turns it red. So now they have a citric acid solution in here that's red. And the question is, can they make it turn back to green by adding a base, sodium carbonate? So they see how many drops of base it takes to turn this acidic solution back to green. Then they add the same number of drops but a more concentrated citric acid solution to make the universal indicator in this well red. And then they see how many drops of base does it take to turn this more concentrated citric acid solution back to green. And they'll see that it takes more. And it makes sense that if they're trying to neutralize a more concentrated acidic solution, it'll probably take more drops of the base. So on the student activity sheet, students record the results. For instance, in the first citric acid solution they used, they used three drops of citric acid, which turned the indicator red. And the question is, how many number of drops of sodium carbonate did it take to neutralize it, to turn it back to green again? Then, when they use a more concentrated citric acid solution, also three drops, they see how many drops of sodium carbonate did it take to turn that back to green? In other words, to neutralize it. And it should be more. So the whole point is that if you're using a base to neutralize an acid, you're going to need more if the acid's more concentrated. If you're using an acid to neutralize a base, you're going to need more acid if the base is more concentrated. So the idea of how a base neutralizes an acid, we try to show that on the molecular level using an animation. So if you notice, this is acidic because the number of H3O plus molecules outnumbers the number of OH minus molecules. In this case, it's 2 to 1. So now we're going to add a base, which is a proton acceptor. So some protons are going to move from water molecules to the base. And now what else happens? In this case, some proton from the indicator molecule and a proton from one of these H3O pluses moved over to the OH minuses and made them into water. And look, what you end up with is the same number of H3O pluses as you have OH minuses, and so it's neutral. We can show that one more time. We start off with more H3O plus than OH minus. The Let's see where the protons are going to come from these two water molecules and turn them into OH minuses. And then what continues to happen is with these excess OH minuses, the indicator molecule and another H3O plus are going to donate their protons, turn those back to water molecules, and you end up with a neutral solution with the same number of H3O pluses as OH minus. Now, if you're in an NGSS state, there's a performance expectation, MSPS11, which says develop and use a model to describe how the total number of atoms does not change in a chemical reaction and thus mass is conserved. 
the lesson relates maybe a little closer to specific disciplinary core ideas and science and engineering practices than maybe it does to this overall performance expectation. Let's take a look at how this lesson relates to the information in the foundation boxes. So for science and engineering practices, developing and using models, we developed a model, basically the animation was a model to describe an unobservable mechanism. What's going on that causes a solution to go from acid to neutral? And this idea that substances react in characteristic ways, that's true for acids and bases when they interact with water and an indicator solution. And matter is conserved because atoms are conserved in physical and chemical processes. In this case, it's a chemical process. It's an acid-base reaction. It's true that matter is conserved. That's not the main focus of this lesson. It's really why is there a color change and what happens when an acid is neutralized by a base. So thanks for watching and good luck with the lesson.